Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Cruise News Show. I'm your host, Tony, here to answer the big question, uh, why do we even have to wear masks on a cruise ship? You guys have asked it a ton in the comments. If testing is the be-all, end-all, then why the heck do I have to mask up when I go cruising again? By far, wearing a mask on the cruise ship has been the thing that people have said they don't want to do it. The most vocal people have said, I don't want to wear a mask on a cruise ship. Why would I spend all this money just to mask up? If testing is the end all be all, why do I have to wear a mask? Well, that's the rub. Testing is not the end all be all, and it's not a uh, silver bullet that's going to keep everybody safe on the cruise ship. Now, the cruise industry has committed to testing 100% of the crew, 100% of the passengers, but the tools they have to do the testing are not foolproof. We've talked about it here before. Two major kinds of tests, the antigen test, which tests for the protein that matches the coronavirus. It's, uh, it's not as reliable as you would want it to be. The big challenge that you have when it comes to creating the cruise bubble is you want to keep the virus off the cruise and unfortunately the tests that we have they they yield false negatives they tell you that you don't have the virus when you might the antigen test is the worst of the two the very first iterations of the antigen test sometimes were 50 percent wrong where they were giving false negatives when people were still positive positive. and so sometimes you have to take multiple antigen tests to maybe get an average or sum out or figure out exactly what's up with the patient but now there's been a new antigen test released uh, approved by the fda that's brought that percentage down it's still being determined what that percentage is but there still is a possibility that people will be tested and come up with a false negative meaning they have the virus and they think they don't what's fortunate for the antigen test is it very rarely reveals a false positive chances are if you take the antigen test and you're testing positive you you got it and so that's uh that's the good part of the antigen test but the bad part is it drops the ball sometimes when it comes to the negative test result. Now the other test, the PCR test, the RNA test, the test that tests for genetic materials, it also has a false negative problem, yielding up to 37% false negatives in some studies. So that's a that's a big deal. They're telling you that you're negative when you actually have the virus. The PCR test, like the antigen test, very rarely gives you a false positive. So at least there's some sort of security there if somebody tests positive for the virus that they do actually have the virus. The PCR test, it's a little more complicated. It can take a little longer. It's more apt to human error because you gotta handle the sample in a certain way and it's got to be tested in a laboratory type setting it's not as quick or rapid or easy as the antigen test it's more accurate but it's also more prone to error many of the false positives that you do see on both of these tests come from mishandling of the sample so you've got not only the whole virus is it there is it not there but are the people that are taking the samples processing the samples doing it in a way where the test comes back accurate have I given you enough information to see that this whole thing is like Swiss cheese. It's not the safety net that we would hope testing. It's more of a net with big holes in it. And so uh, if this is the foundation of our cruise bubble, this testing to get on the cruise ship, you might not feel very comfortable. And yeah, that's what you see. The cruise lines, the people that are in charge of health and safety, they don't feel very comfortable saying, well, once we get people through the testing process, everything is a-okay. That's why you can't just rely on the test. So you have to rely on other health protocols. And you guys know the triangle of the health protocols, social distancing, masking, and washing your hands. These are the ones recommended by the CDC. These are ones that are recommended by the World Health Organization organization and these are the trusted sources for people like cruise lines for businesses for people that are establishing standards they're going with the big organizations that have been around for years talking about health and safety they're not just going with the one-off guy that you can find on the internet that says all these things are wrong and so they may be wrong but the cruise industry like many organizations across the world are leveraging the experience of the big health organizations like the world health organization and the 
CDC. And both of these organizations say that one way to prevent the spread of the virus is to wear a mask. But hey, that's confusing. Didn't the CDC in the beginning say don't wear a mask? Yes, you're right. In the beginning, before they knew how things happened, they said don't wear a mask because they didn't want everybody to go out and buy out all the toilet paper. No, wait, that happened. They didn't want everybody to go out and buy up all of the PPE because they thought that it was essential. The reality is they probably should have said from the beginning to somehow do something to cover your mouth and nose. And after more information about this virus became evident, like the people who don't seem sick could have the virus and that people before they're showing symptoms can spread the virus. Once they had that information in place, they said, hey, it makes sense if you can cover your mouth and your nose so that you're not spraying the virus onto other people that you come in contact with and that if everybody does it there's a good chance that we will reduce the spread of the virus that's their stance that's the masking policy that's what the organizations like the cruise line are leveraging when it comes to their policies again agree or disagree you might have your own favorite scientist that says that's all wrong but unfortunately you don't get a vote when it comes to what the cruise industry is doing because they're using the who and they're using the cdc and they're using their own experts and so it's one of those deals if you want to play in their playground you gotta follow the rules hey sorry i was being a little bit rude i forgot to ask whether or not you wanted to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Do you like the cruise news? Do you like these kind of conversations? Make sure you subscribe and stick around because I'm talking vaccines in a second and I'm, uh, yeah, I'm talking some other stuff. So uh, back to the video, subscribe notification bell on. A lot of people also ask, do I think that the cruise lines will require you to be vaccinated before you cruise? I'm going to continue to say no just because I don't believe in this first round of vaccinations that a lot of people are going to take the vaccine. I think if the cruise lines start sailing with these protocols that they put forth and they're working, the testing, the masking, the social distancing, all the things that they're putting in place, the fresh ventilation systems, if all of those things that they put in place are working, I can't imagine that they would require a vaccine for you to cruise. There could be some other questions like, well, what if you have been vaccinated? Can you provide that? instead of a test. All those questions will probably be answered in time, but right now it's just too hard to tell. We don't even know what these initial protocols are gonna be. We have got to look at some of the initial protocols that Royal Caribbean has released as they're going to do cruises to nowhere in Singapore. There's a good chance that those protocols will come to the United States. And one question that's been answered that people have asked, what happens if you do test positive before you get on the cruise? What happens to your cruise fare? Royal Caribbean has said in that documentation that you will get 100% of those funds to use on a future cruise so you will not lose money if you cannot get on the cruise ship because you've tested positive before you get on the cruise it doesn't mention your airfare it doesn't mention your hotels at the port anything like that it only deals with your cruise fare and still a big unanswered question is what happens if you don't like these protocols and you don't want to cruise and you already have a cruise booked what's going to happen to your money then only time will tell so the question, if testing is the end all be all, why do I have to wear a mask on the cruise? The easy answer is testing is not the end all be all. They're, they're not 100% accurate and therefore you got to put another layer of health protocols and they're going to put the triumvirate of protocols. They're going to put the social distancing. They're going to put the hand washing. They're going to put the masking on you to make the cruising experience more safe, leveraging the established science put forth by the big organizations that take care of health and safety, the CDC, the World Health Organization. That's who the cruise business is looking toward to give them guidance and that's the protocols that they are following. I know this isn't gonna satisfy people that don't like those organizations. I know this isn't gonna satisfy people that don't like those protocols. The interesting thing to me from my observation is in this country, we haven't even tried to do this. There are people that have never masked up in public just because they won't do it. And so it's hard to determine whether or not a masking policy is effective here because it's just not widely accepted. It's gonna be interesting in that small community, in that microcosm of the cruise ship to see whether or not requiring people to wear masks where they cannot socially distance, whether that actually combats the coronavirus. We've seen that happen. We've seen those little communities go out to see, come back, have a good cruise, 
systems using all of those protocols. And so I would say that that's a use case where you could say that those things do work even if you are anti those things, uh, or maybe you could just call it lucky. But how do you reconcile that? How do you, how do you reconcile the success of Europe using all these protocols versus the idea that these protocols don't work? And uh, what do you think this means for US cruising? Do you understand better now why testing is not enough? Let's have a conversation in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching the show today. Hope you enjoyed it. Show your support by hitting the like button. This is Tony for La Lida Loca, and until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.